Welcome to the Misophonia Podcast. This is episode number two of season four. My name is Adil Ahmad, and I have misophonia. On this episode, I'm talking to Julia, a woman who wears many hats, professional Instagram influencer, sports product tester, and much more. She travels the world constantly for her work, and we'll hear about how she handles miso doing that. She's also one of the few people so far who legit like triggers herself in a way that causes issues for her. She also has some other conditions and medications she's juggling. All in all, a super interesting episode on a pretty unique lifestyle that also reveals some new dimensions on misophonia that we don't usually hear about. By the way, if you're interested in connecting with Julia, I'll have, I'll have a link to her Instagram, gem underscore touchdown, in the show notes, and also through our own Instagram at misophonia podcast. Just a heads up, the audio might sound a touch distorted at times. There was a slight issue in recording, but at least I still think I got out all the usual little triggers that microphones pick up. I want to also just lay down a disclaimer that nothing in here is uh, medical advice, especially about medication, as always. Uh, it's just a couple of misophones hanging out, so if you have any questions, please uh, seek out a, a doctor. And one last thing, you'll hear a bunch of references to the Clubhouse app, which is an audio group chat room app. Uh, we've created a misophonia club on there, so and you can search for it in Clubhouse. We'll set up a group meeting soon, so if you're interested, just uh, search for it, click to join, uh, or ask an invite. Uh, ask for an invite, and we'll hook you up. All right, now let's get to this week's conversation with Julia. Julia, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really happy that you started this. So. Yeah, and well, actually, you know, where did we? Where did you find out about it? Was it on um, Clubhouse? Because I, I started following a bunch of people who mentioned misophonia, and then I think you were one of them. They're not a lot. I of think people. it was. Yeah, yeah, I think it was Clubhouse, and um, there still isn't a misophonia group. I don't think because you have to host a few in order to start a group. But that's that would be great. Another thing, um, yeah, it's like to ask is it kind of like uh, where are people located, but uh, it seems like you're kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, do you have like a home base or kind of where, whereabouts are you based? Yeah, so I ended up in Spain, um, in Madrid before the pandemic, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be a full time or temporary thing. But now that all this is happening, there's really I don't want to make a big move right now. Yeah. Um, but I'm American with a French passport and a residency in Spain. So I've been able to travel quite a bit during the pandemic. So right now I'm in Madrid. I just got back um, yesterday. So I'm a little bit jet lagged, but yeah, handling yeah, it. So. Oh, I love Madrid. It's been a while, 20 years since I've been there, but that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, also a double passport crazy. person here. So it's good to be able to what are yours escape well nothing as exciting just canadian and american but uh <laughs> at least but canada uh, canada is the hardest one to enter these days i hear oh okay okay well, well they have the that. most strict yeah yeah they're the hardest oh. ones to get through. Yeah. maybe you, you want to say kind of kind of what you do for for work or kind of projects wise or sure um i mean my name is julia Nell. um i have an instagram with a funny handle gem touchdown that at one point I tried to return to my name, but my following disagreed, so that is stuck. <laughs> um, and it's even better because obviously there's so much hate in this world, so it's nice to keep a little yeah. anonymity. I guess like I'll continue to tell you what I do for a living, and for a normal person, this is a lot. But for someone who has sure. brain doesn't shut off because of misophonia, it's nothing. Like people with misophonia, right. that's the issue is that our brains don't shut off, so we're constantly needing to do something. Yeah, so through the Instagram, I'm able to travel and I do um, travel wellness health influencing and I have over 100,000 followers, mainly in the US, second France, third Brazil. Um, and I have the ability to travel having multiple passports, as I said, and having a residency in Spain. That's a question that comes a lot, like as in this past year, is why I've been able to travel so much. And um, it's been a blessing because I get to go to all these destinations with no one there. And that's you know, a trigger for me is tourists and crowds and having people around me. So it's been really nice to go to places that are empty and have no one around me at all. So that's been great. And then um, I'm also a product tester for sports, mainly ski, surf, and golf with brands such as Nike, Lululemon, and Backcountry, who I'm sure you know. Um, but yeah. I've also started to take a stance with sustainable brands on my own accord. So the newest one being OKO Living, who makes 
beautiful knit yoga mats. Um, really, it's a really nice product. And um, in Spain, I started a women's group called arcwell.co. And each evening we have a female entrepreneur speak of their business and the guests learn and also support by buying their products. And um, it's been a really beautiful experience, but I just sit back and watch and take photos because as you will learn shortly, it's best that I just say nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have a startup, an application, which hasn't started up due to the pandemic. So my patients, especially with having this disorder, is tested daily. Um, I'm constantly pressured or asked why it hasn't launched and things like that, but just timing. Um, and Yeah, this um, past year has been, yeah, everyone's had to kind of change their expectations. Yeah, so. and like Clubhouse is like doing well, but my biggest thing with Clubhouse is like it's got this big boom right now, but no one's really sure what the direction is and if it's going to go well and if it's just because people are bored. Um, and so I need to have an 18-month gradual growth with an app. That's how an app is shown as being successful. So you can't just have like a big growth and then nothing. Mm -hmm. um so that and um yeah that's like pretty much my work background i went to college um three times i dropped mm -hmm. out um because i couldn't concentrate and um i was being diagnosed with everything from adhd to bipolar disease and mm -hmm. i didn't want to take any of the medication um but i made it through three and a half years <laughs> once yeah. And, um, <laughs> almost, yeah, almost. But yeah. Almost. Hey, but at least you and, learned. You learned everything, but you know, you just didn't yeah, get the paper and, like, at the exactly, end. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. What I'm doing actually with um, with the app is art direction, really, and that's what I majored in. And so it actually turned for, for full circle. And um, do I regret not graduating? Yeah, like I regret not having that piece of paper. But I've done a lot of um, sort of certifications on the side. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's Which, a little bit of my background. And uh, I guess, um, well, yeah, maybe maybe go back to um, you were talking about, and I was curious um, about travel in the la in the last year. Um, I mean, yeah, I love to travel when there's nobody around and I'm not stressed out by tourists. I mean, um, it we it was it like um, it sounds like it's been amazing in the past year, right? I mean, it's part of your work, and now you can go and kind of have your pick of where you want to sit or talk or or eat um yeah um it just depends on like per city obviously every city um is organized differently and you can't believe the news these days so um you know, yeah the, uh, the one other person i've talked to was uh on a previous podcast is a uh stand-up comedian so he travels the world as well and he's got his uh you know kind of uh, some countries have a have no um concept of misophonia or even mental health but others do um i don't know do you, do you feel are, are there places that you feel like are a little bit more maybe sensitive to it or or are, are there some places you fly into and you're like oh shit i have to you know i got to be careful of um you know these areas or you know um or the people here are just a little bit louder um uh, well i think so. like obviously the vacation kind of places like i mean um i was really fortunate right after i had i had COVID twice the second time was in march um everyone here in spain had it everyone in madrid oh and okay. um and so the second that i was able to leave here i went to greece i went to santorini which i'd never been to before and I experienced it in a way that no one else has. I mean, there was no one else there. They like mm. upgraded me to this insane honeymoon suite. I was just there by myself, my own pool, like 360 degree views. Wow. And those kinds of places I think are where you want to go if you have misophonia because people are in vacation mode generally. Um, it's quiet. Obviously it's not a large city. There's still um, tourist things to see and so um what i did was i got a driver so i was alone mm -hmm. <laughs> so i was not with a tour group even if there were one which i don't think there was at the time and i did my own wine tour by myself like i went and saw oh, amazing. some sites yeah. by myself and um that kind of you know that's definitely a luxury that like a lot of people don't get to have but at that time they were so desperate for any tourism that you know yeah um, I was able to get it. So I would say that and, you know, I mean, I am definitely one of those people who will like go into a museum if someone's being loud, like I'll tell them that mm -hmm, <laughs> they're mm -hmm. talking. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I would like to say that museums are a great place for people with misophonia because they do tend to be quieter. 
but you know, there's that one person and that's really who's coughing. I think ticks, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Who like ticks us off. It's like yeah. in the crowd of a street, I'm not so bothered. It's when it's quiet and you hear that one person making a noise or like even their laughter, unfortunately, um, mm. it's a trigger for me and I, um, don't have the ability to not express myself. So I express myself, um, as kindly as I can. Um, you know, like we're in a museum and it's a place to be quiet and enjoy the art or however I decide to address the person. Um, but it's not usually appreciated. So, um, but I would say most cities, so the museums, parks, you know, but generally, yeah, quiet vacation destination is ultimate for someone with misophonia. Yeah. So your, your triggers, um, um, are the, probably the usuals, like the, uh, mouth induced <laughs> mouth, uh, oh instigated God. kind of ones, I guess. Yeah. I have a bunch. I mean, yeah. definitely that's the first one, which I think everyone, that's like the first one, right? When right. people are chewing and um, making any noise, any tapping, keyboard no noise, um, walking on the floor bothers me, unfortunately. Like, I'm really, um, I'm really bothered by a lot of things and medicated because of it. Um, so unfortunately, like even my own, even my own sounds, my own breathing. Um, okay. Yeah. Get into, Something, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, well. Let's get into that because that that does come up uh, where people ask like, uh, well, actually, misophones sometimes are worried that okay, I'm I'm developing more and more triggers as I'm getting older. Am I gonna, you know, be unable to hear myself? Um, so that, um, but most people aren't super bothered by them by their own sounds. So you're saying that um, are you equally triggered triggered by your own uh, sounds as as other people? Not equally yeah. triggered it, it depends on the day and i should probably get into this too because of mm -hmm. i because i have misophonia i have something called sleep paralysis um i have it really badly so it's not just a daytime thing for me it's a nighttime thing as well um and my brain just never shuts off so like i i have a very low ability to hit the REM stage which is so important of sleep so mm -hmm. i'll go a few days of not sleeping at all um and then be able to hit the REM stage and then I wake up and my body doesn't wake up um so it's something called sleep paralysis and people mm. get it like once in their life um people who have drug and alcohol addiction will find that they have it um occasionally but this for me happens anytime I get take a nap anytime I sleep in um because those are the times that I'm so exhausted that I have to do those things um and yeah, so it affects me like every, I mean, my breathing when I'm sleeping, it affects me. I use um, a, an occlusal guard, which I think is really helpful. Um, it's a dental guard for a night mm. guard, um, but I actually use it as much as I can during the day because I, t I tend to um, clench my teeth mm -hmm. um, because I'm so irritated all the time by things um unfortunately and okay so your physiological reaction it's it, a lot of it is yeah clenching because you're holding it in yeah. like all, all of us do until you have to yeah <laughs> yeah i'm trying to hold it in you know i try yeah. to especially obviously in public places but and with strangers um but you know so at night i have to use um earplugs an eye mask i put my hair back in a certain way i sleep in a certain like everything's routine that really helps mm. me um and the mouth guard really like I my dentist is like anyone who has this should have this mouth guard um, has really helped me in the morning I feel less tired um, and less anxious because my jaw is much more relaxed um, and during the day I found that my airpods really helped me in the same way that they help me at night so when I'm running I don't have to hear my breath um, I don't have to hear my feet when I'm running um, and I do agree that the older you get the worse this gets so it's really really important to see a good shrink um, and get medicated. I really, unfortunately, think that the only option with this is a little bit of medication. I mean, you can do, and I have my yoga training, like, don't get me wrong, like, I drink a smoothie every day. I'm so healthy. I hate the fact that I take medicine. Um, I don't take it every day, um, mm -hmm. but I have to in order for myself to be a normal person and get regular sleep so I'm not even more irritated. And um, and I think basically in the morning when uh, if I, my routine goes off, you know, I usually wake up in the morning, I drink a glass of water, I go for my run, I feed my dog, I run the shower, I drink, drink a smoothie in that order. And if any of that is out of order, then I know that I have to take this medication. So I take a quarter of what I'm prescribed 
and that does it for me. Um, there's some days where I have to share workspace. Forget it. Like that, I know I have oh, to take yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so even if someone's working for me, like I just don't want to be, I don't want to be a, a jerk. So I'm just, you know, so I preemptively take it. And then at night, I'm prescribed clonopin. I take a really the smallest dose. And I'm really lucky this week actually to have jet lag. This week I haven't needed to take it, and it's mm -hmm. a very addictive medication. So if you have an addictive personality. Um, you should make sure to tell your doctor this because you should not take this med medication if you do. Um, so this week I don't have to take it, which is great. And eventually I'll have to start taking it again. And you basically build up a tolerance to it. So you start with half a pill and it goes to a pill and then, you know, one and a half pills, two pills. And then at that point you really want to, you know, go back down to zero for a couple of days and try to, you know, get through it on your own. Um, well, that's just what I suggest, but. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting because, yeah, you, you, you hit upon a couple things there, like you try to reduce your stress as much as possible. You get that routine going because for a lot of us, it's like just being able to control or knowing that we have control over our environment can is a, is a big part of like, um, uh, you know, not flying off the handle so much um so those are those are great things and then then yeah that's that's interesting and then then i guess once you have those down you can decide how much medication or it yeah you know what do you want to yeah do for like medication. i was doing everything i could and it got yeah. to the point that and i i see a therapist um and um there was a while in my life i didn't see one at all and i find him to be really helpful to talk to i see him via skype he's in the u.s so he's american mm -hmm. and understands like our American angst, I guess. Um, and, uh, you know, it got to the point that I was running and doing things that were healthy. It wasn't that I was going to some other vice that someone would deem as unhealthy. It's like alcohol or cigarettes and things right. like that. I was, I would run twice a day. Like I would run in the morning and then I'd feel anxiety at 6 PM. I would go mm. for a four mile run again. And that's mm -hmm. not healthy, even though it's quote unquote healthy, there is too much of a good thing. And, um, and I was like losing weight drastically and, um, you know, there were certain things that was just like, it was obvious that I needed more, a little bit more help. Um, but again, as I said, this is like something that a doctor should advise you. And also, um, again, there's so many different medications. So I went through a few months of trying every type of medication for sorts of anxiety disorders that you could try or seizure disorders. Um, and some of them made me depressed. Some of them made me more anxious. Some of them made mm -hmm. me more irritable. So every single person is so different that, you know, right. I couldn't diagnose someone. So, and then the, the therapist is different than, than your, the shrink would be, would be the one prescribing the medication, right? Yeah. Um, the therapist is who you talk to and he thinks I'm a, I'm a delight because I always have these like fabulous stories of, you know, being, you know, just like ridiculously irritated with, <laughs> Yeah. absolutely nothing right. um so but yeah he's great so. did did both of them um did um did, ever, did everyone know about misphonia in advance or was this yes, something that yeah. you had to tell people okay okay no, no that... they absolutely knew um and the, the shrink i have here is from germany she's a woman and she knew about it and um she knew right away that i had it too because or she knew that i had some sort of obsessive compulsive on the spectrum something yeah. because of the way I was looking around her room, I guess, or something she was saying. Um, so she had to work with my therapist because like I picked her up much later on than my therapist. And I just wanted them to discuss to make sure I wasn't explaining things the wrong way. I'm not a doctor. Um, right. and he is very knowledgeable about the subject. So, oh. um, was that something that was you looked for or was it like, like coincidence? No, 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 like, okay. not at all. Not at oh. all. Um, yeah, no, not all. He's actually, his base is actually a sex therapist, and that's not all, at all why I was seeing him either. He just came as a recommendation from a friend some years ago, and mm -hmm. um, and he does. I think his therapy works for me because the kind of therapy he offers is uh, more assignment-based. Like this mm. week, make a list this way versus this way. And for someone whose mind doesn't stop working, it, it helps. It's not really it's not much of an emotional thing. I haven't cried yet or anything. Um, right. I'm really looking forward to that, but um, it's more pragmatic, I'd say, so. Yeah, yeah, interesting, yeah. And it goes back to like getting routines, having control of your environment. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I guess maybe, um, maybe let's, yeah, let's go back to kind of like when do you kind of remember this all maybe starting for you? Um, uh, was how, how, how far back do you remember? 
um, being triggered? Um, yeah, I know that was like a question that you'd ask um, on the questionnaire. I, I'd say my earliest memories were, I mean, I still have friends from the age of three, which is amazing. And mm. I definitely was somewhat of like the class clown, I'd say, because I would say things that were really direct um, and then kind of had to laugh it off, you know, because you were really <laughs> being a jerk. Like, definitely. But you're like, oh, I went too far. I better, I better laugh it off and lighten Yeah, and so everyone would uh, laugh with you. But yeah, I was never, yeah. I was, it wasn't like, I wasn't like this typical American high school bully. I went to like an all girls school and, um, and then I guess there could have been bullies there as well. But luckily we had like a really good small school setting. Um, so I was friends with like everyone with every type of background. It wasn't like that. But, but, uh, I remember those kinds of things. Like just, I remember saying these things and I remember being scolded. I remember the first time I was scolded was by my father. Um, he had an artist friend who had an eye that wasn't going in the right direction or something. Mm -hmm. And I just remember saying something because the non perfectionism of his face or something really, I was very young. I mean, I was like six or seven. I was, this wasn't like I was a teenager, like having an outburst at somebody's deformity. Right. But I remember like being pulled into the kitchen and being told that I couldn't talk this way to people and like, and the like, from then on forward, I knew really what I was saying and doing was wrong. Like, as in like, it wasn't the socio norm, but I couldn't help myself. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, ha ha, like your face looks like this. It would just be like asking questions about it or mm -hmm. in like crazy curiosity, I guess. Um, like unnecessary like you can't take me to a cocktail party even now if i don't know anyone <laughs> um it's a disaster so <laughs> right yeah. right so i'd say those are my it's a really general first memory um i mean um and i, I did have sleep paralysis um starting at a very young age with like which was diagnosed as night terrors because i couldn't that express I've heard myself of. okay yeah. Yeah. Well, I couldn't express myself like I was like five years old and I couldn't be like, oh, well, my brain wakes up before my physical body. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, some five year olds talk like that, but not yeah. me. I wasn't like the brightest five year old. And uh, so I think I was just like, I feel like I can't move or whatever. I don't know what I said. And this is not like in the last five or 10 years. So I don't know if there was that much knowledge on misophonia and sleep paralysis. Um, and so they just thought I was having terrible nightmares because my parents were getting divorced. So you're, you're constantly getting this like therapy and the shrink advice, which I was so blessed to have, but they were all going the wrong direction for me. Like no one was actually listening to really what was going on with me. And I was being misdiagnosed constantly over and over again for many years. So, yeah. So yeah, it seems like a lot, a lot of things were, were kind of going on there. Um, and, uh, and, and then when it's kind of maybe sounds come in the picture or was that always kind of part of that part of the thing going back to almost age three? Like that's just part always of one of the things you thing. noticed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been a thing. And, um, that's another thing I actually remember again, the same lines of getting into trouble because I was misunderstood and being at dinner and having to leave. Like I would mm -hmm. get up from the table. Um, I would like throw a fork on the table. Like I don't, nothing like I wasn't violent towards others, but you know, I was aggressive and I would have to leave the table because I couldn't deal with someone making noise or I always thought that someone was che chewing with their, their mouth open or yeah. their mouth full. And, um, and I do think that I actually was bothered by my own sound even then a little bit, yeah. but, um, but yeah, that's what I remember. Was there, was there specific people that maybe triggered you more than others? Is a lot of people find their, either their mom or their dad or, 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 you know, a, a, a grandparent maybe is kind of the initial trigger or trigger and then it kind of grows from there or was it? I don't know. Like, yeah. I think, I actually think that my dad has it. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's not uncommon um, either. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, I think a lot of things are like genetically predisposed. Well, how do you say it? Pre predisposition. Or predisposed, Something like that. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. We, we get it. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, now I want to, now I'm stuck on that word, but, <laughs> but and my, I guess my mother maybe a little bit, but for mm -hmm. me, it's really strangers. It's like anyone I don't know, it's not possible for us to be sitting next to each other, even today. Yeah. Um, it's not even, um, even having a serious relationship with somebody, it's not possible for them to be typing their computer at the same time as me, or I can't do it. I just can't do it. And um, right. so it's not something that's like, it's really been like that for my whole life. 
Yeah. Um, and then when did you find out that, uh, uh, you know, obviously uh, other things have, uh, have kind of more, um, more no, I have had you know more awareness earlier on. When did you find out about misphonia? Like when did you hear that it it was a thing, had a name? Um, only in the last five years. Um, and I only was a hundred percent sure I had it when my therapist was like, "You have it." Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I'd been diagnosed so much with so many different things, and everything sort of made sense, but none of the medication made any sense, and. Um, once you're properly diagnosed with whatever it is that you might, whatever disorder you might have, it's amazing how much um, help you can get. Um, and so I kind of ignored it for many years because I was like, I don't have ADHD. Like, I'm able to accomplish a zillion things. So I don't have ADHD. Like, I don't have mood swings. It's just a con constantly like this. So it's not my <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, yeah. Hey, awesome. No mood swings. It's just constant. It's 100% disorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. 11 on yeah. the dial um okay yeah so and so what are um uh, what are some yeah what are some of the things that uh your your therapist a, anything like specifically miss funny related that that uh that he's kind of uh worked with you on um i, I mean there's not there's no cure so it's just like all the usual no, just, you know i just have to think about it i think um i think we were sort of talking about it in relationship wise terms about how hard I am on people. Um, mm. And it takes like a really strong person to be around someone like us um, because they have to understand that it's not about them. Um, and yeah. this sounds like the most selfish disorder ever. <laughs> like, yeah. Like I can be a jerk and like be irritated by everything, but you can't be irritated by my, my irritations. <laughs> like right, I need right. to be organized the way that I am organized. Otherwise this just won't work. There really is, unfortunately, in my case, I feel no way around it. Um, like if someone enters my house, the things have to go this way. Um, and like noise levels and things like that. Um, and same, what I find when, what really has helped is like eating, especially in a couple or um, even amongst friends is music really helps me, but it has to be the music that like I choose mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. or like music that I like. So I'm irritated by so much. Um, and so I think it was mainly to decrease the stress. Um, yeah. So, and as I said, I was like running on empty, running in the morning, running at night, and then not sleeping well. Um, and the first thing that we wanted to take care of was sleep. Um, and then we realized, so once I got, t I took care of the sleep, and I was prescribed to Clonopin and started taking that. And I realized in the morning that I was waking it up, waking up really ear like I, I noticed that it wasn't just a night thing that I needed just to sleep but it was actually a day thing as well um and that uh, in the morning I could tell really quickly if I needed to get medication or not um so like today I didn't take anything yesterday I didn't either um so yeah yeah and uh and, and how um so when you are around like other people uh with it you know with it without medication like are or when you meet new people are you um when does it come up basically do you wait for a trigger or is it like well here's here's my uh here let me text you my list of demands kind of thing or uh um i'm just curious think, how you uh, yeah like i think <laughs> my old friends even my new friends quickly yeah. are able i don't i mean i try to explain the disorder thing but i think that especially new people rather just they understand who you are kind of and um yeah and like appreciate you for being a bit different um but it can become know. a filter. Yeah, I mean, a filter of who's, you know, who's worth keeping around if they... Yeah, even and I think sometimes care. it's funny, like, having us around, like, yeah. you know, like... <laughs> well, humor is I a mean, great... Uh, if you can turn it into humor, like you you did at that young age, like, humor is a coping mechanism that's, that's worked for a lot of people here. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so I'd say, I mean, if it's a large gathering, for instance, I was at my friend's birthday, um a few weeks ago like i'll take something to mellow out so that i'm right. not so boisterous with people um i don't drink much alcohol because i find that that makes it even worse um i've, I've cut back on that too yeah yeah <laughs> i think that's the first thing for anyone like i mean anyone in this world really i mean i know this past year has been tough and we're all bored yeah. and it's nice to have a glass of wine but any more than that like it's not happening with me um 
I know that it's at her birthday and I said something that was like kind of weird to like <laughs> to one of her friends who was older, like much more dignified person, like in her forties with kids, you know, and um I can't even remember what the topic was, but it's probably like sexual or something inappropriate. And um and like I've learned how to like sort of like I realize what I say and then I just like, sort of roll back through and let them speak for a while and I just like don't say anything. And then I hope that they forget. And in this case, they did not forget. Like, this was, like, the gossip of the night, like, whatever I said. Um, and, uh, you know, these things happen. And I'm a full-blown adult, you know? Um, yeah. So it's, like, embarrassing a little bit. And I'm like, oh, is my friend going to forgive me? And she wasn't even mad. My friends weren't even mad, but you think that they are. Um, so they've had, like, more of a laugh out of it than anything. Um but yeah, like dinner table settings, like wedding settings, they know not to sit me around strangers or who to sit me around, like people mm-hmm. who, um, who can be like respectful or whatever. I mean, it just it's just depends on how how much or how much time I spent with people for them to know, um, yeah, know about what's going on with me or my character. I guess you could call it. So. Yeah, and uh, and have you had? Uh, I mean, have you had uh, kind of a few? Um, I don't know, maybe Miss Funny related blow ups uh, through, through your life that are kind of uh, that you kind of remember as being uh, I mean, in- interesting for me milestones. It's a, is, is it all for the me time? It's or a, is it, uh, it's a, it really top is five? An all, <laughs> oh my gosh. For me, it's an all the time thing, um, you know, and just having. So I guess as I've gotten older, the, I don't know if there's a top five, but as, as I've gotten older, I've been able to like get myself out of the situation much faster whereas when I was younger I was like no like I would try to correct myself or um I feel really really down about myself um for much longer about like what I said said or my reaction and like why am I not normal and not knowing what I was controlling but as I said before like once you figure out what's what's wrong with your brain really like what your disorder is like you're much more accepting towards yourself, which is so nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but even just an instance, the other day I was on the airplane and this woman was like making a lot of noise in front of me, like front left seat. So not even right in front of me. And she was wearing a see-through mask and she was wearing like a Cartier watch, like in her 60s. She looked like a classy lady and she's French. So going back to this whole COVID travel thing. Um, and I was like, do you mind just like being more quiet? And like, and I also topped it off like, do you mind putting on like the appropriate mask? Yeah. And she goes like "va faire fouche," which means like "go yeah. after yourself." I know. <laughs> <laughs> to me, on an airplane, yeah. like we're wow. on an airplane, there's no way where you can go. And I just like kept quiet. And then I just like looked down. I was like, okay, like, like. In, but in an, another time, I probably would have continued with the conversation. Um, but I think there's a difference between um, people who are outrageous, like jerks. And the people who have misophonia, I think that like we all realize, like because we've been going through this our whole lives or however long, most people their whole lives, you really quickly are able to realize what the next, like see what the next step, which way this could go, where it could right. go really, really badly. And like have someone just continue to yell at me and this plane gets grounded and I don't know what. Right. Or like I just sit quiet and just like put my mouth guard in, put my AirPods in, like try not to see her because it's not just you know it really i can actually like hear things that aren't even there like if she's eating and i can just see her mouth and i've already heard it even with my Whoa, AirPods, visual like, triggers perif- yeah yeah a lot of us have that i feel it you know i feel her eating and um so yeah so no this is a constant thing for me and um and as someone you were saying asked if it gets worse as you get older i think it does and i think this year did not help anything um I think like circling around in our apartments and um, I mean, it depends where you are, but yeah, I think that as we get older, we get, you know, we know what we want in general, just as a normal human being, even without a disorder, we know yeah. what we want. We have our lives more organized. So it's like when things are out of order, even the older than we get, the more control we have, you know, the more financial stability you have, all that gives you more control of your life. Um, the more the, the the less these things are acceptable, you know, more and more so. So right, the, the less they're acceptable, right? Yeah, because it's like, uh, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's really interesting how that uh, that balance shifts as you get older. You can get out of situation, but um, the fact that something goes wrong when you do have more control makes it somehow worse. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. Um, 
Did you and 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 growing up? So, um, it, it, do you do you feel like uh, I I know I realize you have a lot of stuff. You had a lot of stuff going on, but uh, has misophonia maybe in particular like caused um, maybe damage like family relationships at all, or caused more distance? Do you feel than than oh, 100%, it would have otherwise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, there's a lot of times where you could have been quiet, you know, and never like, yeah. and also. I, I mean, it makes you, you're stubborn about it because there's really, as I just said, and I mean, it sounds, it does sound crazy that I'm saying this, that for me, there really is no, um, there's no way around it. This is something that I have to live with for the rest of my life. Um, it's not something that just like goes away. That's why when right. I said it's really important to get your diagnosis because like bipolar disorder, it's like sometimes you might be like this or sometimes you might, this is for me. Every minute of my day, like it, I could be triggered, like even with the healthiest morning that I'm having, um, and especially I expect so much more from those around me, and that being my family, um, my loved ones. Um, you know, I expect that they would understand, be more understanding, and things like that. So yeah, um, definitely, um, I've taken time. I guess part of it too is like I find this a great platform having a podcast that you have because um I also don't like socializing much and that includes family as well like I can only take so much of yeah. being around people it's exhausting um and I know that's a, that's a case for a lot of people and families but even more so for us um and so I do take breaks um I live very far away from my family <laughs> <laughs> um and people in Spain are very relaxed so this is actually, I would definitely say that Madrid is a great place for people in misophonia because like no one's up to anything. It's very slow paced. Um, you got that afternoon siesta. I think it's what it, what, it, what it's called. Yeah, right? you and have you a can, siesta. Yeah. Oh, people do it. I can't do. I can't. Can't. I haven't right, gotten to that, that point sleep. yet. Yeah, yeah. But like you know, if you get up at eight in the morning, like that's crazy early here. Like, <laughs> like you're supposed right. to get up at ten. You're supposed to have lunch at two. Everything's two hours later. Yeah. Um, right. So it's, at midnight and yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have misophonia and you have to have your routine in the morning, like I do, like you get that done and then everyone else wakes up and no one here exercise or not no one, but most people here don't exercise like Americans or Canadians do, or, um, I don't know, somewhere else. But, um, so by the time they're waking up and going to work, like you, you're energized and you're, you know, your day is going to be off to a good start. Um, so yeah. And I don't have the drinking habit so unfortunately my nights are not the late spanish nights right. but i would definitely say this place is great and plus it's got a really a much older generation that lives here so mm -hmm. they're all like much quieter and gentler and yeah right and how did you um and did we talk about did, did you sit down with your family and tell them about misophonia like I, i'm curious how their reaction was and uh and you know what happens around the holidays like christmas or thanksgiving Oh man. Well, <laughs> uh, question, my maybe. family is a family full of disorders. Um, so like we all have very different personalities, except that I really think that we all share some form of, um, I know all of us actually, I'd say like half of us share this. I have one sister who's extremely sensitive. And so like with her, it's great cause she's very quiet speaking. She actually has like a whole wellness kind of podcast. Um, we're very different personalities. Um, and, um, so I'd say that, I think that I just told my dad in the kitchen or something and mm -hmm. my, um, stepmother was around and she was saying that she has it when he eats an apple. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> like, <it's not. laughs> like you can be annoyed when someone yeah. eats an apple once in a while, but like, like every little sound. And like, as I said, even after the sound is over and you put your AirPods in, it's like, you can't help, but be distracted by that by that noise or whatever it is oh yeah no it's it's, it's there's definitely a, a a period of uh coming down from that trigger definitely yeah, yeah. so i think i dressed it the wrong way because i was like I, and i was like i have misophonia and i think you have it too <laughs> <laughs> and you know my dad's in his 70s he's like an american man and like they're not really into these kinds of things um so i don't think that that part was appreciated so i'm not really sure i was listened to that that much or that well yeah. um but it's funny because like he stomps around and he'll like slam a door and like do these mm. things that you know i don't stomp around i mean i'll definitely have a reaction maybe like slamming a door but i don't have a door to slam luckily in my apartment but um but 
you know, these kinds of things. And I'm like, this is exactly like what I'm doing. So like, it'd be nice. Um, you know, maybe you should just like tell your therapist this or whatever. I'm just trying to help you out. You know, my mother, um, I told her and I don't, you know, I think that she agrees. (laughs) I think she's happy that I have a diagnosis and that, you know, that I've been able to help it with doctors and things like that. This has, yeah. So, well, yeah, actually, yeah, that, that brings a point. And so the diagnosis has obviously helped, like, um, get, get you, um, you know, medication, tips. Has it helped um, in, in, like, get accommodations anywhere? Like, well, I guess you're not in school right now, but, like, you know, some people have been, or, or like, you know, not, like, you're not in an office, but some people have been able to use that to maybe, um, you know, get special treatment, um, maybe get a, their own room or be able to take an exam separately. Uh, I don't know in the kind of work you do have you have you been able to to get accommodations anywhere with your with your diagnosis? Well, not with my Maybe diagnosis. Get your own plane. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Um not with my diagnosis, like I don't say, Oh, I have this and this and this. Yeah. Um but I have a dog I have and she's actually um she's a service dog. She's not an emotional service animal. So an ESA would be more appropriate for misophonia, but because I have my sleep disorder, which is considered a seizure disorder, I'm able to have a service dog. And so, um, I trained with her when she was a baby and she travels with me on airplanes. It's amazing. Um, she's like the best behaved dog. Um, Mm. so I have her, I don't have to explain myself, which is great. But the thing is that actually, it's easier to get a dog on a plane if you have an emotional disorder than a physical disorder, which is weird. Um, so like if you have an ESA dog, it's easier emotional service animal. It's easier than a service animal. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing too, is like when you go to a hotel, you can definitely like, you know, I, I just think that like being polite is the, is the number one way to go. So usually actually even before I go to a hotel, I'll write them and I'll say like, Hey, like, you know, I'll even make up a story rather than telling them that I have a disorder, which I've never even thought about telling them that I have this, um, because I'm in Europe right now and I don't know, I don't know how forward thinking some places are. Um, I've heard some know. of them are not. <laughs> so I'll just yeah. say that. Yes. But then we're yeah. Yeah. So, but, but I think if you write them a polite letter before you get there and just say like, even if you're making it up, but I have not been making it up, just being like, I've been working really, really hard and like, this is the only vacation I'm going to get to take or or like for me, a lot of the, the hotel stays I get are through influence work, so I don't have to pay to stay. Um, I'll just request to not be near a room with children or something like that. I mean, I can stay up all night if I hear a noise. So yeah, that ruins my entire trip. Um, you know, no, so I mean, that, you have I mean, legit, you have legit, yeah, legit reasons other than yeah, even other than the misophonia. So uh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I hadn't heard I hadn't heard of anyone doing the uh, writing a letter or calling in in advance and uh just asking for for any kind of uh because yeah usually you know i think usually they will try to accommodate if they can so that's uh of course like why wouldn't they want you to have a good time you know it's just like being polite like being extra nice and like being clear i think that goes with anything in life well i guess we're coming up to coming up to an hour um maybe we should uh start start to wind down but I'm, i'm curious um um maybe after after this, after this um call we can maybe try to set up a clubhouse meeting or something later maybe we'll, sure. you know, but sure. um but is there you know is there anything kind of anything you want to you want to tell folks um maybe internationally or 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 or, 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 or here uh just about um oh, misophonia and uh advocacy or 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 just tips in general i mean i guess one is um it really, as I said, it really helps if you think you have this or something else to see a good doctor and make sure that you're you're diagnosed yeah. correctly with whatever it is because there's one billion medications out there. There's a treatment for everybody. Every single person on this planet is different. So, again, like it's really important that you are given a course just for you. Um, and staying on a routine is like I would say my, my number one tip is staying on a routine. Um and uh yeah i mean i don't know about ad- advocacy i don't know i mean I, again like i never even thought about telling a hotel that i had a disorder um <laughs> because they yeah. probably would have arrived That's... and they would have thought like oh well, where's this invisible you know in france it's like you can't have a dog unless you're blind or deaf so 
I have <laughs> walked through a park wearing sunglasses before, you know, not fully right. just thinking that maybe if I get stopped, maybe I can get away with this, you know, but then you have to, right. you know, and I've had this happen. So not with misophonia, but with my sleep disorder where I've had to explain to a, to a French policeman about my sleep disorder and be like, I actually have seizures and at night and yeah. um, we're like, this is a seizure disorder or whatever it is. And then yeah. they're understanding, but that takes, you know, at least a good 10 minutes of compassionately right. expressing this to somebody. Right. Um, so it's unfortunate that like we have to take our time to do that. Um, but you know, obviously the more that we inform others, the more people will become more aware of this. Um, and this isn't like the worst, obviously there's so many worse things that could be going on with right, you or, right. you know, this, this isn't something that like is something that can be fixed. Um, but there's ways to make it better for like your everyday living, you know? Yeah, that's interesting for advocacy. So, um, a few of us are talking about um, putting together like um, training or seminars for like HR to be like, you know, here, here's, you know, here's how you should maybe design your work environment or design some like, um, you know, policies at work to make it easier for for your employees who might have misophonia. But I, I had not thought about the hospitality um, industry. I think that would be super. You know, maybe have. Uh, something that they can throw into a page of their whatever their uh, the guest book in their um, in each room, or just kind of train people to like uh, look out for this. Um, I mean, it's called respect in my yes. eyes, oh, uh, you know, which yeah. I feel well, like I think, everyone is lacking. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy no, no. I, to all of us, it definitely definitely should just be that simple. But <laughs> but yeah. uh, the 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 rest of the world uh, will is is slowly coming around. Hopefully. <laughs> I think but, like uh, there's a couple of Asian countries that are respectful and the rest of us are just like, I just, yeah, the chewing with the mouth open. The ch- I mean, even, I mean, I know in Japan it's illegal to walk and eat your food at the same time. And obviously that doesn't wait, really make sense. did you say it's, it's illegal to walk it's and illegal. eat your food? Yeah. Um, oh. Which is, makes sense, sort of. Like, one, yeah. they want to put their business in the restaurant. I mean, right now things are different, right? Because of the yeah. pandemic so there's some cities like in paris where you could take out your food and then you can't sit in the restaurant so you have to walk and eat your food or you have to sit in the park mm. but um but those kinds of things like where like you should only eat where you're supposed to be eating you know like you shouldn't be eating at a desk there should be an area where everyone has to go eat and that should be instilled for work environments for it's just anyways yeah. i mean i think now it must be sort of pushed because you don't want someone with their mask off you know spitting their food right. everywhere all over the computer it's just gross so right. um right. <laughs> so i think we're i think that i don't think these are hard things to instill really um you know i think i guess as a boss to notice who has a twitch or not and like put them away from the people who have misophonia <laughs> like, right. yeah. you know tapping of the foot the pen the chewing of the pen the you know well, if, yeah, and, and if bosses want to want to bring their employees back from work from home, I think they're going to need to like step it up a bit at work and and uh, accommodate accommodate some of these some of these issues. So, um, I mean, we're talking about a TV show here. I mean, I think it would be hilarious. Julia, for, I mean, I want to say thanks thanks for coming on and, sh- and sharing your story. A lot a lot of interesting things here, and um, yeah, hopefully we can have a. Um, get the get the clubhouse um, audience listening in as well. Maybe we'll find some people we can help. Yeah, thank you so much for hosting this. And I'm sorry if it wasn't like super entertaining. This is a uh, no. This um, is, this is but day to day, I think it's pretty, uh, pretty entertaining for me sometimes. Thank you, Julia. Hope you're still healthy and doing great in Madrid. Remember, I've got a link to Gem underscore Touchdown on Instagram and um, in the show notes here. If you're enjoying the shows, don't forget to leave a little review. You can hit the five stars on Apple Podcasts or anywhere. Music as always is by Moby, and until next week, wishing you peace and quiet.